Okay, we left you at this part here in the last video, <clears throat> and now we're going to add some extra features to the components. So we've already got a number of good features built up, a lot of small features to build up the, the complicated part. So we're going to look at the whole wizard and producing basically the, the countersunk hose that we see here in the section view. And we're going to just produce four of them on a radius or a pitch circle diameter. So you can see here we have the pitch circle diameter actually uh, and the hose sitting on this diameter here, diameter 76 millimeters here. So let's have a quick look at that. So back into SolidWorks. So the counter sunk is from this end here. So it's in this face here we'll be doing it. So if we go to the hole wizard here, we're going to define the counter sunk hole. So the first thing is the types of holes. So if we look here at a counter sunk hole, um, we're going to use an ISO standard. And if we scroll down, and the type is the counter sunk that we select here. So there's various standards there to suit different types of countersunk screws. And it's an M6 we're choosing. Sorry, it's an M8 we're choosing. And <coughs> its fit is close. Which is basically the, the distance or the clearance between the, the bolt and, and the hose. So for an M6 or an M8 uh, screw, we can see that the hole is 8.4 millimeters in diameter. And ours is going to be true all. So it's going through the whole flange. And we will not put any head clearance on it. We'll leave that off. Talk about that in the lab, what that's entailed. So that's the type of hole and the geometry of the hole. We next move to the position of the hole and where we want to locate the hole. So don't touch the 3D sketch. What we want to do is we want to pick a flat face. So it's this flat face here we want to choose. And it's a good idea at this point just to drop the hole anywhere along the flat face. It doesn't have to be in the correct position. And just hit escape. And hitting escape will stop you placing a second hole on the feature because we're going to just pattern around the single hole. We're not going to put in the four holes at this stage. And again, we'll use the normal tool to button to see exactly where we are. So you can see here this component's orientated. So we want to drag the, the hole straight at 12 o'clock directly in the, in the correct position. So we can actually add to this by using some small construction lines. So if we drew a center line from the center of the hole to the center of the component, and back again we can actually add a smart dimension an angular dimension which allows us to control the angular position of the hole so that could be useful in this case it's going to be zero because it's straight up uh, the other dimension we need to control is we need to control the position of the hole so I said it was on a 76 pitch circle diameter so it's basically 76 and we can divide that by 2 in the modifying the smart dimension and hit OK. So it's 38 millimeters. So we can see the hole where it's placed and just accept that. So that's the one countersunk hole done. And the best method is to, to pattern this because, for example, we want four countersunk holes, but if we wanted to increase that to six, it's very easy to increase the circular pattern. So, circular pattern the features we want to do again, pick it off the feature manager, countersunk hole. And the parameters here is the axis of rotation. So again, pick any cylind cylindrical feature. And you can see it says six holes there. We only need four. So let's just change the six to four. And this is the preview there we see in yellow. And we're happy with that. We can hit OK. You can edit the, the features here as well. Just hit OK. And there's the four holes completed. I do show on the drawing a small counterbore spot face at the back of these. These two could be added to the pattern. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a feature called the rolling back the model so i'm going to actually drag this blue bar at the bottom left hand corner of the screen back past the pattern so we're going back in time before the pattern was created and all i'm going to do is do a simple sketch on the back face here and we we'll look straight in on that and that sketch is going to be a small spot face So all these features and the names of these features are given in a handout for the lab. So you can refer to the handout for things like spot faces and undercuts. All right, so we have a small spot face at the back. It's diameter 14. Uh, it's it's related to the back of the hole there. It's, it's, uh, the center of the circle is, is in line with the center of the hole. So I know that's fine. I don't have to give it a radius from the center out or anything. Exit that sketch and just do a feature extrude cut. And just cut into the part. It's 3 millimeters deep. So it's a small spot face in the back of the back of the whole feature. Now if I roll forward the model again by just dragging the blue bar forward, I can actually edit 
the circular pattern. So I can go edit feature and I can add more features to the pattern. So for example, I'm going to add the cut and you can see it now appearing and hit OK. So now I've got the spot face on the back of each of the holes as well. So moving on then to the next feature, which will be the keyway. So I'm going to do the parallel key at the front on this face. So just have a quick look at that in the 2D drawing. This is the keyway down here that we want to look at. Uh, so we can see the slot itself is a diameter of 6 and it's 15 millimeters between the centers. And there's the distance in there. So let's just have a quick look at that. Now we're going to use a, a feature in SolidWorks where we're going to create a sketch on the center of the part, but we're not going to cut from the center of the part. So let's have a look and see how that's done. So let's go from the sketch again and sketch. And again, we look normal too, so we don't make any mistakes. And we want to put the keyway here. Now we can use the slot, the straight slot tool here, which is very handy. So you can see it's snapping on the center. So we just pick our two center points and drag out the, the radius of the slots. And we'll go up to the smart dimension. We can dimension three millimeter radius. And we can dimension the distance in here from the edge of the part into the center of the slot, which is uh, 12.5 millimeters. We can then also dimension the length of the slot, which is 15. Okay, and, and that's a place. And you can see that slot is, is, is drawn in the very center of the part, but we actually don't want it cut in there. Uh, if we look at the section view the, the, here of the component later on, this is the, the depth of the key. So the keyway here is 9.5 millimeters from the center line to the bottom of the keyway. So I'm going to show you that how to do this now with the feature. So we're going to features, extrude cut, and we select sketch 15 here which is the slot we're after producing and we're going to cut through all but we don't want to cut from the center up what we want to do is use this feature here so normally we, we cut from the sketch plane but we can add an offset to that and the offset we want to do is that 9.5 millimeters so it only starts cutting 9.5 millimeters away from the center plane of the part and that's the bottom of our keyway so let's hit okay there and we can see the keyway produced here. It's not produced from the center. It's only pretty shallow, not from the very center plane. So let's quickly move on to the next keyway here. And the next keyway is a woodruff key. It's used for tapered shafts. And the key is kind of a half moon shape, semicircle, if you will. Uh, and again, detailed in the handout for the lab. So we want to add this key to the component. So again, it's on the same center plane. So if we just highlight the planes, it actually occurs on this plane. And what we simply do is we create a sketch on this plane. And again, let's hit normal too. So the keyway is going to be here. If we want to look at the part the other way around, we can hit normal too again. And it's still on the same plane, but looking in a different direction. So we simply just draw a full circle and, and cut with the full circle. We can add our smart dimensions. It's a radius 10, it shows in the drawing, which is diameter 20. And we can, again, measure out from the part here, it's 25 out. And the distance then maybe from the center down to the part, which I think is 5. So we just, if I spin it sideways, you see it, we just drew a simple circle. And we're going to cut with that. So features, extrude cut, and we do use a mid plane to get the right width. So we can see it's 4 millimeters wide, and it's cutting each direction so it's four millimeters total two millimeters each way and hit okay and that's the, the woodruff key keyway machined into the part just going to quickly finally finish on a uh, just some simple fillets and again the fillets are really at the end so we have a, a few larger radius radius trees each side of the spline so we just add them in just pick the edges And hit OK. And then we've, we've some smaller fillets as well. We have some uh, one millimeter fillets. They're actually on this back face. There's a small, very small undercut I forgot here. So I'm just going to do a quick sketch on this back face. And I'm on sketch mode there. And again, I can look normal too. It's radius 25. 
and the next out is turn 60. Okay, so I have two circles drawn there 150 and 160. I'm just going to use these two circles to cut into the power. So accept that sketch, features, extrude cut. And this only goes in, it's, this is on, on, on the detail of the handout I give you on detail D. It's just three millimeters deep of a cut into the part. And accept it. And as well as that, there's a wee small one millimeter fillet on the internal edges. So this wee edge here and this wee edge here is one millimeter. So we can take a quick look when you're, when you're drafting. We can do our section display here of our component. If we want to ever have a quick look, see what that looks like. Uh, you can see that's the last one there I just added in to the component. And I think that's pretty much all the features done. We can exit out of that sketch. The last thing is we want to obviously keep saving it. Uh, and we'll just assign a material. So if we right click, we can assign uh, a material on the quick list. So if we hit edit material up the top, it brings us into the full list of SolidWorks uh, materials. Okay, so I have just two SOLIDWORKS material database and a DIN standard database. So we can pick the standard one. So if we go for an aluminium, uh, we can pick maybe a common one here. We'd use a turn on the 6061 and hit apply. And it adds the material properties to the component, which is which is good to, good to have. Okay, so just finally again, save the part. And that's really the second part of modeling the tapered shaft with the splines on it so that's where that's it and next we'll move on and we'll do a, a 2d manufacturing drawing of the component uh, in the next video and detail that